Good day, wood carvers. My name is Jim Spitzer, and I'm a member of the Oregon Carvers Guild, as well as the Guild of Oregon Woodworkers. And I'm going to go through the process of my process of getting going from raw materials to a finished comfort bird. And uh, I added a few things here that you might not see in the articles. Uh, this is one article on comfort birds from Wood Carving Illustrated. Here's another one from the complete book of wood carving. And uh, ultimately, I started with this style but I preferred this style better, so that's what we're going to be going through. And what we see here are 16 steps that I use from getting to a raw blank of wood uh, to a finished comfort bird. And uh, we will go through these steps, I'll pick these up, we'll take things apart so you can see how it's done, and we'll go over to the one principal machine that I use, which is a belt sander. The first birds I made I would consider abject failures. I made them of the first design that I held up and you can see I've got a lot of lumps on it, I've got uh, groove marks and, uh, and, they, and here the one I oiled I've got a lot of sanding marks and I was not satisfied with my technique at all. I was doing them one by one, just uh, one blank, just the size of a bird. Uh, so after you choose your design uh, then you're going to have to make a top and a side profile plate. Uh, the magazine or wherever you get your design from will probably have something you can cut out. And I basically take this plastic and uh, so I can easily go around it with a marker and mark the profile of the top and the, and the side. And then I transfer first the top image to the blank of wood. You want to make sure that the, I, I basically use a longer blank of wood so I can do multiple, one cut on each side and I can do several birds at the same time. In this case four, in this case it was long enough to do five. I mark these out on the top and you want the blank to be wider than your, otherwise you, if it's just as wide as your comfort bird, you'll be dealing with a lot of little pieces and it will be a real pain to tape them all together. And so you want to just uh, lay them out here and have a distance between each one of your birds. Distance between the beaks, distance between the tails. That will allow a smooth transition of your bandsaw from one bird to the next. And you can go down and then you're just dealing with two pieces of wood here. But you're going to have to put these pieces of wood back on and uh, basically line up, uh, extend lines say at the beaks over down the side of the piece of wood so you can take the side profile and mark that out all along here. And then you're going to tape this back up. Tape it up so you can cut it on your bandsaw with a quarter inch blade uh, like so. One more comp comment on the uh, templates. Uh, while this is a flexible plastic, you can also use cardboard. Anything that's stiffer and will be uh, easier to maneuver your marker around. So the next step is to what you just cut, tape it all together. And I like to just tape it uh, around the tails or in the midway in the tail. And, uh, and then you'll have to use your template again to mark over the tape so you have your cut line prominent. And then you're going to go to the bandsaw and you're going to cut this side profile. So then we're going to tape the cut sides uh, back on and we are going to trace the side profile to the taped up blank. So go through with your template and, uh, and with your lined up with your line coming from the beak on each side, go down the block and mark it all. I like to use a thick pointed mar marker and the reason is I just try to cut right on that line. And so you're now we're doing the side cut, uh, the side of the profile and you will be cutting through your masking tape that's holding it all together and when you're done with that side cut what you have are your basic bird outlines and the advantage of having them connected uh, in at least groups of two is that now you can use one bird to hold it when you're doing subsequent steps on the sander or on the carving bench and you can take a vise and just clamp down right here and you can have both hands free to do whatever method you're going to use to shape the bird. And okay, now you're taking your 
bird blank of two birds in this case, and you're going to draw a center line from beak to the middle of the tail, in this case a swallowtail bird. And I just do it like this and then use a broader tip marker around, right down the center. So now when I'm, on the, when I'm carving the shape or the profile, the de details, I have a point of reference in the middle so I can try to get it comparable on one side to the other side. And then I also draw another line down here uh, because we're going to round the bottom also and uh, make that curve gently, or fare that gently over. And that's just a point of reference. But now we're going to carve the bird, a rough carving. And you can use many different methods. I mean, you can use uh, your, your hand tools, your whittling tools uh, for the purist who want to spend more time at it. Uh, but I'm making these in mass for a benefit and for gifts and whatever, so I want to do this as fast as I can. So I put a 36 grit uh, belt on my sander here, and, uh, and, and basically we got this loud machine with dust collection operating uh, when I'm really doing this. And I'm fairing the sides of it, and I'm kind of working my way to that line, but not all the way there, because of course uh, the bird, this bird's not going to have a pointy head. And I'm working both sides as this sander is working. And, uh, and then I'm going around to do the base of it and just uh, operating. And I'm not putting much pressure on it because, first of all, this is very aggressive. You don't want it to carry the, uh, the bird away. And you certainly don't want to get your fingers in here. Uh, this uh, grit will go right down to the bone and nothing flat. And, uh, and so when I do the top, I'll have this. And then I will start doing the bottom. And we'll do the, the same side. This is a three inch diameter drum. And when I've done the bottom, I'll have it kind of like this. And now I want to do the beak. And so I'm going over here to the one and a half inch uh, wheel where I can rotate it around like so and just uh, very gently ferret until I get something that looks like this. Uh, you'll see the tail. We don't cut this off yet because I want to have this. Uh, this handle, if you will, for my subsequent steps. on to clamping it in the vise and doing more refined work. So you can see my work surface here is a is basically a small carving bench that I have adjusted the height to. It's about chest height because I like to work close to my face, which would probably would be good if I was sitting down, but normally I work standing up. So I can clamp it to this just using a C clamp like so. Uh, I happen to have a Craig clamp up, built onto this bench so I can just uh, easily clamp it and move it. And, uh, uh, that's how it's secured without moving. I put this foam pad underneath uh, so we're on, I'm not clamping to the smooth wood and it holds it very rigid. If it was clamped to the smooth wood it would have to be clamped tighter uh, to avoid uh, moving back and forth. A few options here for refining the shape. Uh, first of all, if you see high spots, you could take a Dremel tool or a Fordham and just uh, delicately, delicately work out those high spots. I prefer this carbide grit, uh, rotary tapered uh, grit or whatever, uh, because it doesn't have the burrs that this other style grip has, and it gives me a, a smooth finish right from the outset. But, uh, but what I really prefer is going right to an 80 grit uh, sanding belt. This is a small sanding belt for a portable sander and, uh, and it's 80 grit. I think that's a good num number and basically all I'm doing is wearing it like this. Wearing a little bit of respiratory and protection because you are making dust and, uh, and it takes it down very quickly. It takes off all those high spots from the uh, 36 grit and you're able to uh, uh, refine the shape even more. And there might be some areas that you might want to use a carving knife on if you want to just refine the beak a little bit uh, or just continue with sandpaper. After the 80 grit, I'm now using scrapers uh, to basically take out most of the grooves 
from that anti grit. So here. So now we've uh, we've fared all the high spots out and have a nice shape all around uh, using that 80 grit belt. Uh, so next we're going to uh, take the sanding marks out from this uh, 80 grit belt that we've been using to fare off the high edges. And I'm going to first use scrapers because that gets almost all the grooves out. Uh, you can get it almost to a, a mirror finish if you could take it far enough. And these two blades actually came with a set uh, which is, this is sold at, I don't know, Woodcrafters I probably got it, uh, probably get it at Home Depot, and it comes with uh, different blades that can go in there. So I'm not using them with the handle, however. Uh, and, uh, and then I have this small scraper set, of which I primarily, for this project, used two of the four blades that come with it. Uh, you got the, the concave bit and, uh, and a flat bit, and it comes with this little set. I think I got this at uh, Woodcraft in Tiger. And, uh, and basically, I'm not going to go into instructions for sharpening scraper blades, but basically what you want to do is you want to have a, a flat surface and uh, done with a file perhaps, and then you want to take a burnisher and, and just go a couple times across the edge, and that will make a, a sharp line just cutting over the metal. And all I'm, do, all I'm doing is and I'm doing this one in the wrong direction because I want to go with the grain and I, as the grain slopes down and it comes off in really nice shavings. And, and I, I'll take this as much as I have to around the beak and whatever and, and the more of those grooves or gouges I get out from that 80 grit, the better. Uh, and then I'm going to want to go to uh, finer grays of sandpaper because there probably will be, still be something there that I didn't want to scrape away. And, uh, and so I might go through a series of grits, uh, perhaps starting with 120 or so and maybe going up to three, three, over 300. Uh, some people will take it even smoother than that. And when you're using a sandpaper, uh, basically you're doing a lot of movement because you don't want to create any grooves in here. And also you might consider having sandpaper over a foam block or a foam sanding pad because that will help conform the sandpaper to the edge and you won't see the grooves. Those little grooves might be left from your scraping operation. So the next step is you want to cut the tail. You're, you finally don't need this handle anymore and you've got to make it into your, uh, the shape of your final bird. So. I'm doing this on the bandsaw, uh, or you could use a coping saw or whatever, makes no difference. And then I'm going back to my, uh, my 36 grit sanding belt on the sanding machine or wherever you want to do and you kind of lay it down to make this taper. Uh, you want it to be thicker where it hits, hit, is at the body and fair right into the body and then tapered near the end. And I basically we'll try to get it down to where I have a balanced bird. Uh, so the, when you put it down on a surface, I like the tail to be up. Of course, if you have too much uh, weight on the tail still, uh, it will be on the, on the ground. And I just like a bird that floats around like that uh, and will drift with the wind or with a touch. So part of my problem with the first bird so I'm holding in my hand was not only how I didn't have it's fairing out evenly from one part of the bird to the other. Uh, but I also had residual grooves from sanding, the coarse sanding, which I didn't take out. And I tried oil finishes at first. I love Minwax Antique Oil Finish. I use it a lot of, on a lot of my furniture. Well, the oil finish basically will darken uh, and accentuate the, any sanding grooves or, or mistakes that you have in there. And so I went through and experimented with a few other finishes and I ultimately settled on uh, just a crystal clear paste wax with uh, uh, carborundum and, and, and you look at this and it's just, it's just perfect all around and it just has this wonderful feel and it, it doesn't darken the wood either. You could also use a water based uh, finish or something other w without oil in it. Uh, that won't darken the wood and accentuate any flaws that you have. So here are my comfort birds and I've already uh, given a couple of out uh, to, uh, to friends in, in, with serious issues in need of comfort and I've really enjoyed doing that. 
Uh, we've had members of my wife's uh, book club here, and they all wanted to walk away with one. Uh, they weren't dealing with issues, so I wasn't ready to give them one yet. Uh, and we gave some to uh, about 15 or so to Larry Wade for the upcoming gathering of the guilds for sale. Uh, and you can see these are different species of wood. Uh, these are just different blocks of wood that I had around and maybe two by two uh, scripts of lengths about uh, two feet long. And, uh, and this is uh, Bocote and Paduk and this one here is, uh, is maple. Uh, and I've used a number of other species. So it's a great thing to do with your cutoffs. But I would highly recommend that whatever wood you use, make it at least long enough to get two birds out of it. So you have that handle to help in the first uh, steps of your process. Okay, as far as the wood you want to use, uh, I, I think most hardwoods would probably work well. Uh, here I've used a number of exotics as well as a local maple. Uh, but I would recommend not using a, uh, a softwood, certainly not one that has a really hard annual growth rings alternating with the soft because you'll probably have a hard time uh, getting that shape without getting the punkiness and basically breaking the grain. So I use the 36 grit uh, sanding paper belt on the belt sander because that just takes this wood away really really quickly uh, and I enjoy that and I find it's a lot easier but you could use carving tools to, to carve this. It's one option. Uh, you could use a, a, a rotary tool like this uh, with the proper head for uh, carving wood. Uh, or you could use rasps uh, like so. <laughs> of course, you want to use an aggressive rasp to, to start out with, and you want to just be careful and fare it out nicely. Uh, one, one tool is uh, here we have a very aggressive rasp on one side and a smoother one on the other. And you can see that works uh, quite rapidly, but it will be a lot of effort, certainly more effort than turning this piece on the belt, uh, belt sander. So a final step would be, after you apply your finish, would be to buff it if you have a buffer. as that and you just get a really nice uh, uh, satin glow to it. It, uh, it really improves the final product. Thank you for uh, listening and uh, may these birds uh, uh, be wonderful gifts to your family members uh, or for benefits like for the Guild of Wood Carvers Guild uh, or for friends in need. Thank you.